Hello YouTube and welcome again to my channel. This time I wanted to talk a little bit about faith. Jehovah's Witnesses supposedly have great faith in Jehovah. Well, what really is faith? An interesting question. It's one that was recently addressed on JW Broadcasting. So, faith is defined for us in the Bible. The assured expectation of things hoped for, the evident demonstration of reality so not be held. And each of us have our own version of faith. But on a personal level, we have people that we've known for differing amounts of time. And sometimes, uh, the longer we're alive, the longer we know people, the longer we get to appreciate their personality. So, I'm going to read some quotes from that are taken from the 2013 CD-ROM. And I'm going to use them under the fair use section of the copyright laws. I'm going to start back in 1951. This is from the Watchtower, 1951, June 1st, page 335, paragraph 10. The very bottom of that paragraph says, Hence, our generation is the generation that will see the start and the finish of these things, including Armageddon. Let's flash forward to 1968. This is from the Watchtower, 1968, August 15th, page 499, and it's entitled, Why Are You Looking Forward to 1975? Paragraph number 30. First sentence, are we to assume from this study that the Battle of Armageddon will be all over by the autumn of 1975, and the long looked for thousand year reign of Christ will begin by then? Possibly, but we wait to see how closely the seventh thousandth year period of man's existence coincides with Sabbath-like thousand year reign of Christ. If these two periods run parallel with each other, as to the calendar year, it will not be by mere chance or accident, but will be according to Jehovah's loving and timely purposes. At the end of the paragraph, it says, It may involve only a difference of weeks or months, not years. Then again in 1968, 8.15, August 15th, pages 500 to 501, paragraph 35, the middle of the paragraph says this is not the time to be toying with the words of Jesus that concerning that day and hour nobody knows neither the angels of the heavens nor the Son but only the Father to the contrary it is a time when one should be keenly aware that the end of this system of things is rapidly coming to its violent end so that was 1968 now let's go to this little book called No Jehovah it's um, KJ is the words for it on the CD-ROM, chapter 12, pages 216 to 217, paragraph 9. It says there, shortly, within our 20th century, the battle and the day of Jehovah will begin against the modern antitype of Jerusalem, Christendom. Hmm, don't think that one's happened yet. Let's go to 1974. This is from the Kingdom Ministry. Kingdom Ministry 574, so that's May 74, page 3. How are you using your life? It says, yes, since the summer of 1973, and I'll skip down to the last sentence of that paragraph, reports are heard of brothers selling their homes and property and planning to finish out the rest of their days in this old system in the pioneer service. Certainly, this is a fine way to spend the short time remaining before the wicked world's end. Short time, 1974. Now I'll go to an awake of 1974. Um, this is 11-8, so November 8, page 11. Is this the time to have children? 1974. Uh, in this paragraph, I'll go to the second sentence. It says, The evidence is that Jesus' prophecy will shortly have a major fulfillment upon this entire system of things. This has been a major factor in influencing many couples to decide not to have children at this time. So I remember going back to that 1968 quote, they said that the Sabbath period was probably going to be very close to 1975. Where have we heard that before? Okay, so let's go to 1980. This is from a watchtower, October 15th, page 31, questions from readers. Um, I'm going to go to the middle of one of the paragraphs. So it says, uh, and if this wicked system Excuse me. And if the wicked system of this world survived until the turn of the century, which is highly improbable in view of world trends and the fulfillment of Bible prophecy, there would still be survivors of the World War I generation. 
However, the fact that their number is dwindling is one more indication that the conclusion of the system of things is moving fast towards its end. 1980, they didn't think we would make it to 2000. Huh. What is it now, 2015? Then there's one, down the code for this book is SU. I think that's the survival book. I can't completely remember. But on the CD-ROM, it's uh, the uh, SU, chapter 24, uh, pages 184 to 185, paragraphs 5 to 6, entitled The Countdown Nears Its Zero Hour, paragraph 5. That countdown that has proceeded for some six millenniums now nears its zero hour. So close is it that people who were alive in 1914 and who are now well along in years will not all pass out the scene before the thrilling events marking the vindication of Jehovah's sovereignty come to pass. 1984, Watchtower, 515, that's May 15th, pages 6 through 7. Title 1914, The Generation That Will Not Pass Away. So in the middle of this paragraph says, Jehovah's prophetic word through Christ Jesus is, this generation, in brackets, of 1914, close brackets, will by no means pass away until all things will occur. And Jehovah, who is the source of inspired and unfailing prophecy, will bring about the fulfillment of his son's words in a relatively short time. Let's go to the yearbook of 1989, page 3. In the middle of a paragraph, it says, With confidence in the vision's complete fulfillment, during the decades of this 20th century, the anointed remnant of the bride class have never let up in saying, come. So, there is more. But well, let's go to the definition of a generation. We now know that new light has been shed, and the generation means a group of people who overlap the lives of a group of people. Which is funny, because there's not a dictionary around where you'll find that. So let's see what a generation meant in 1951. Watchtower, 51, 7-1, pages 403 to 404, paragraph 11. So the last part of paragraph 11 says, The actual meaning of these words is beyond question. That which takes a generation in the ordinary sense is at Mark 8.12 and Acts 13.36, or for those who are living at the given period. So it was on this generation that the accumulated judgments were to fall. Therefore, this means that the, from 1914, a generation shall not pass till all is fulfilled and amidst a great time of trouble. 1951. Now let's go to 1978. Watchtower, 1978, 10-1, page 31. Questions from readers. Thus, when it comes to the application in our time, the generation logically would not apply to babies born during World War I. So in 1978, babies were too young if they were born in 1914 to be in the generation. Let's go to 1984. Watchtower, 515. That's uh, May 15th, page 5. And that's 1914, the generation that will not pass away. So the last sentence in a paragraph there says, There are still many millions of that generation alive. Some of them will by no means pass away until all things occur. Now let's go to 1988. This is from an awake. 4-8, 1988, page 14, the last days, what's next? And the first sentence of a paragraph there says, Likewise today, most of the generation of 1914 has passed away. However, there are still millions on earth who were born in that year prior to it. It says, Although their numbers are dwindling, Jesus' words will come true. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. So let's go to 1995. 1995, there was a major shift in the understanding of what a generation was. So this is Watchtower, 1995, 11-1, November 1st, pages 19 through 20, paragraph 12. And the sentence there says, Therefore, in the final fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy today, this generation apparently refers to the peoples of the earth who see the sign of Christ's presence but fail to mend their ways. 1995 saw a big change to the generation. Version 8, or excuse me, Watchtower 2008. They had to change that because the urgency wasn't there. Watchtower 2008, 215, paragraph 24. Uh, excuse me, 215, page 24, paragraph 15. The last sentence says, As a class, 
These anointed ones make up the modern-day generation of contemporaries that will not pass away till all these things occur. This suggests that some who are Christ's anointed brothers will still be alive on earth when the foretold Great Tribulation begins. So from 95 to 2008, the generation meant one thing, and 2008 it meant another. And that's the last two sentences of that paragraph. But then that wasn't good, so in 2010, a year two years later, it changed again. Watchtower, 2010, 615, page 5. The middle of the paragraph says, Jesus evidently meant that the lives of the anointed ones who were on hand when the sign began to be evident in 1914 would overlap with the lives of other anointed ones who would see the start of the Great Tribulation. Thus we have the introduction of the overlapping generation. Even that was too ambiguous, and it left too much. It seemed like it was too far off in the future. So in 2014, they narrowed it down for us. Watchtower, 2014, 1, 15, page 31. So it's paragraph 16 says, The second group included in this generation are anointed contemporaries of the first group. They were not simply alive during the lifetime of those in the first group, but they were anointed with Holy Spirit during the time that those of the first group were still on earth today. Thus, not every anointed person today is included in this generation of whom Jesus spoke. Today, those in the second group are themselves advancing in years. So, you can find these things on the CD-ROM, the 2014 Watchtower, you can find online. But what do we see here? Back in 1951, there was a sense of urgency because the end was so close. At every single point along the way, the end has been so close. And in fact, we see that they've had to change what a generation meant multiple times to be able to fit within their interpretation. So how does this tie into faith? Okay, well, 1951 was 64 years ago. So let's say that you had a friend that told you they were going to do something really soon. Let's say this was a childhood friend. Let's say it was the first friend you ever made. And let's say that you kept that friend throughout your entire life. And let's say they always told you they were going to do that same thing for you really soon. Let's say something really outlandish. Imagine they said, I'm going to buy a car for you really soon. Imagine they started telling you that when they first learned to talk. Or, or we'll say, we'll, we'll give it a little bit more than that. We'll say, imagine when you were four years old, you met them before school, and they told you, one of these days, really soon, I'm going to buy you a car. Um, obviously, it seems outlandish when you're four, but imagine that every single year of your life, for decades, they told you, really soon, I'm going to buy you a car. Would you have any sort of faith that that individual was going to buy you a car? Or, or let's make it more simple. Let's say they told you something more believable. Let's say, um, really soon, I'm going to give you a candy bar. And let's say they told you that since they were four years old. And let's say you had known them for several decades. How long would they keep telling you that? And at which point you would no longer have faith that they had any intention of giving you that candy bar? So, faith is not given, faith is earned, and faith can be lost. In the CD-ROM, it is very easy to see that as far back as the CD-ROM goes, the end was supposed to be any moment now. And there was whole kinds of different um, reasonings on, well, the generation from 1914 is so old, so it has to be close. And that's the logic that I grew up with. But here we are, my whole entire life I've been promised the same thing that's never happened. And the promises extend from way before my life, I never should have been born. So would you have faith in someone who repeatedly tells you something that they don't deliver on? So I guess that's my question. Is, do Jehovah's Witnesses have faith? Or are they just ignoring the past? Are they ignoring what's been taught to them before? So that's up to you to decide. You can take that as you will. But it's all there for you on the CD-ROM published by Jehovah's Organization. So thank you for watching, YouTube. Talk to you next time.